We're going to start talking about evolution and how game theory uses differential equations to come up with really nice models for evolutionary processes, and particularly to understand what sort of behavior might emerge. And what we're going to use is the the uh, a famous game called the Hulk Dove game. And the idea here is that in the Hulk Dove game, we assume we have this population of uh, hawks and, and doves, but the better way to think about it is we have a population of um, aggressive uh, animals or animals that share. And what this game becomes is a model of when two of these animals uh, interact, um, an aggressive uh, over, over some shared resource, so food. If two aggressive animals meet, they will fight over the food. If two sharing animals meet, they will share the food. And if an aggressive animal meets a sharer, uh, the aggressive animal will, will, will um, defeat the sharer and take the, the food. And a, a way to, to represent this numerically is with this game, uh, this matrix here. And so we have a population of individuals that act according to um, uh, this, uh, this model here. Uh, it's called the Hulk Dove game, but we we essentially assume that the uh, the doves are are first. And so, if two doves um, uh, meet, if two uh, uh, sharers meet, they they both get a utility of two. And if two aggressive animals uh, meet, they they both then get a utility of zero because they fight each other instead of getting the food. And then we have this final point, which is if an aggressive animal uh, meets a sharer, they get three and the sharer gets one. So we essentially have four bits of food uh, that will get shared or fought over or indeed lost. OK, now um, what would happen if uh, we let this population grow? So what is the likely effect of, let's say, um, we have a population of nothing but sharers, and then there's a genetic mutation or a new animal is introduced to the population, and we have an aggressive uh, individual, right? Will this uh, aggressive individual take all the food and essentially over time uh, gain more fitness and take over the population? So from generation to generation, because the aggressive individual will have more food, they'll be more likely to reproduce and they'll be more likely uh, to pass on their genes and we'll have an aggressive population. But of course, as the number of aggressive individuals in the population grows, the more likely we are to have a lower fitness and perhaps the doves start start gaining um, more. Um, or will this aggressive individual just immediately be overcome by the doves and, and, and the doves will, will essentially kick out this, this mutation? And so that's, that's the interesting um, question that game theory, and this is the area of game theory called evolution game theory, uh, asks, uh, asks and allows us to, to answer. Um, and the way we're going to do this is we're going to say, all right, let's assume we have a uh, population uh, X, oops, a population X, which is just going to be a vector X1 and X2, where X1 corresponds uh, to, um, uh, oops, I should have said X1 corresponds to the sharers and X2 corresponds uh, to the aggressive ones. And um, these are not counts, these are not numbers. We assume we have an infinite population. What we mean by infinite is that we simply do not care about the individual members, we care about the proportions. And so we immediately have that the sum of the Xi um, over over i, which in this case is just x1 plus x2, is equal to one. In other words, these are proportions. Okay, so a fifty a population with fifty percent of our our population being each would be well that would be 0 0.5 and that would be 0 0.5. Okay, and then what we get interested in is what happens to an individual in this population, and uh, this here is a an X, and here I have an individual, which will be 
going to buy a Kai, so a slightly fancier X. I'll also try and use a, a different color. And this Kai will also be a vector of Kai 1 and Kai 2. And that will just represent an individual who Kai 1 of the time shares and Kai 2 of the time uh, acts aggressively. And so we can immediately start making calculations based on this as to what is the fitness of such an individual. So this individual here in this population, what is their fitness? Well, this individual will meet an individual that acts sharingly x1 of the time, an individual that acts aggressively x2 of the time, and chi1 of the time will act um, uh, uh, sharingly, and chi2 of the time will act aggressively. And so we can write down that the fitness of this individual will be given by will be given by chi times the matrix A. Oops, I meant to do that in boom, times the matrix A do, 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 times X. And if you think about it then you're algebraically and what's happening with this relationship, this will give you the overall uh, fitness. Um, in fact, this thing here, AX, will give you the fitness of um, corresponding to each action. So AX will be a, a vector, which will correspond to the, the fitness of being a sharer, which would be this, and the fitness of being aggressive. And so chi multiplied by that is just that expected uh, average out. And so um, this AX, we will actually denote with F equals AX. So in a population X, in a population X, we can write down the fitness of uh, every type of individual F. Um, once we've done that, we can do a little bit more. We can say, what is the average fitness in the population? Well, given that we know the population X, we know how many individuals are getting this fitness and how many individuals are getting that fitness. And so we can write down that the average fitness is given by phi equals x transpose a x. And once we've done that, we've actually got quite a lot because what we can then say is that if your fitness as an individual, if your fitness is above average, then you will pass on your genes. And if your fitness is below average, you won't pass on your genes. You're less likely to um, take over the population. And that corresponds to this differential equation, which is that dxi um, dt. So the rate of change of individuals of type i in a population over time is equal to the amount of individuals times those individuals' fitness minus the average fitness. So that if this is above average, this is positive. And if, sorry, if this is above average, this is positive, so this is positive, so your population goes up. And if this is below average, then this is negative, so this is negative, so your population goes down. And in our particular case, let me zoom out to get everything on the board here. In our particular case, we can make all these calculations and we can obtain that the differential equations that dictate um, the, the situation we have actually give us, and it's a direct result of that matrix and that matrix alone, which tells us the interactions between the individuals, give us that dx1 dt is equal to x1 times 2x1 plus x2 minus phi, and dx2 dt is equal to x2 times 3x1 minus phi, where phi is given by, by this. And this uh, 2x1 plus x2 comes from the first row of A, and uh, 3x1 comes from the second row of, of A, because that is what the average uh, fitness is. And what's quite neat is that these equations can be solved uh, numerically, 
and they look like this. So here we're saying, all right, let's assume we start with a population mostly with X1. So our portion of X1 is quite high. So we've got mostly sharing individuals and we introduce an aggressive individual. What happens? Well, neither individual takes over. So the, the aggressive individual isn't the right need to kick out. The uh, sharing individual don't, uh, sorry, the aggressive individual is neither uh, uh, immediately kicked out or um, uh, the, does the aggressive individual take over the population. So what happens is we get to some sort of equilibrium uh, 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 where we're going to have a population of both aggressive and, um, um, and sharing individuals. And so this idea uh, these uh, equations written down are the basis for something called the replicator dynamics equation.